Hello everyone, hope you're doing all well today. My case study is on Cummins, which is a diesel engine manufacturer for the automotive industry. And I'm really looking forward to doing this presentation with you because my profession is in the automotive industry and it's ironic that I've been doing some product development along with Cummins recently. I shouldn't take too much of your time today. I'm thinking maybe 10, 12, hopefully not 15 minutes. Um, but it's going to be a good discussion. I'm going to give you my recommendation at the end of it. However, I also want to see what you guys all think about this situation and what you think Cummins should do with a dilemma that they're facing. Uh, just a heads up, I do have a keyboard behind me to change the slides behind me because the clicker is broken. And I also am providing you the PowerPoint slides as an attachment in the forums page. So in case you can't see this very well, and I have it set up to my best ability that I can, but for your best viewing, I am providing slides for you. So let's get started, shall we? So the company Overview, they were founded in 1919. They're one of, they were one of the first companies to produce a authentic diesel engine, which is different from a standard combustion gasoline engine. However, it took 20 years for them to turn a profit for the first time. So that means in 1939, that's when they saw their first profit. However, fast forward to today, they are the largest independent diesel manufacturer. And what does independent mean? That means that they supply their own engines and that's all they produce. So they'll sell their engines to Ford or GM or um, semi manufacturers that you see with the big semi trucks on the highway. Um, just to give you an idea of their presence in the world, they are all over. They're in 131 countries, and they are about second in market share in the world, which is their competitive advantage. And then their 2001 revenues were about $5.6 billion. However, even though that sounds high, their profits were very low in the recent years of this case study. Going into the next slide, we're going to talk about the mission of Cummins. Uh, it really differed until 1999. And when I say differed, it means each location kind of had its different values and mission. And that's pretty dangerous for a company. So the new CEO in 1999 decided to have this mission of creating a mission. Funny how you say a mission and a mission. And it was, a, it was for a standard mission and values all the way across the corporation. The main vision is making people's lives better by unleashing the power of Cummins. Cummins is known for having very high-powered diesel engines, engines that can produce 450 to 500 horsepower and 1,500 pounds of torque. That's a lot of torque. You'll pull a lot of weight with all that power. Their mission and values highlights, however, they like to exceed expectations, meaning they want to do more than what the customer expects, and this allows you to maintain market share or get more market share. And they have initiatives towards having cleaner, healthier, and safer environments to always improve the environment around them. That's pretty hard with diesel manufacturers because diesel burns very dirty. I mean, you can see it when a semi-truck starts up and you see all the black smoke around it. So their mission is to produce less of that with their motors. And then they also they strive to do what is right. And that means to be ethical no matter what. You know, even if it means losing money or even losing a couple customers, um, being ethical is one of their main missions. And then they, they like to honor their promises. They do what they say they're going to do. And that is kind of the main value that was on debate within this case study is to see if they are willing to stick with their original promise. And we're going to dive into that right now. So the challenges. The challenge is that the EPA changed the timeline of a new engine that they are supposed to producing. These new engines are supposed to only emit 2.5 grams of pollution per horsepower hour. I'm not going to get into the details of that because that's kind of engineering savvy and kind of boring when you think about it, even from an automotive guy. Um, however, 
Originally, it was supposed to be standardized in 2004, but in October of 2001, the EPA said, hey, we want to fast forward this to 2002, which is two years ahead of time. And that's pretty hard to do to a company that is based on manufacturing because it takes a lot of time to do R&D. Um, the new change or challenge of this EPA change is expensive and risky because when you forward research and development, you tend to skip over quality or you meet this, the minimum standards of quality and that can hurt your products and eventually you can lose customers and lose money over it. Or you can fail overall with the whole project. The competitors and customers were pressuring Cummins to not go along with this new agreement of fast forwarding by two years. However, back in 1998, Cummins and all these manufacturers of diesel engines agreed to this change no matter what the EPA said, they were going to do it and get it done. So the customers and the other competitors were going to pressure Cummins to have an agreement with all their signatures to go towards the EPA and say, hey, we need this to be delayed to the original time or even further back, or they're just going to back out completely and not even comply with the EPA. And then also Cummins has been losing revenue and profits over the most recent years. In the 1990s, I believe it said only two years out of those 10 had seen a positive profit at the end of the year. So now we're going to go and move in to the more details on the EPA demand. As I said earlier, it's been, ex it's been shortened down to two years earlier than originally. So instead of 2004, it's going to go into 2002 which is very short notice, and that's not what heavy engineered or manufactured companies like to hear. Um, less emissions have been demanded. So originally it was 4 grams of emissions per horsepower hour. Well, now it's going down to 2.5, and that may not sound like a lot of a difference, but it actually is, especially when it comes to you know researching and developing ways to do that. And make it possible without cutting corners and properly engineering a good product. Um, the competitors claim that they cannot meet the deadline. This was mainly Caterpillar. You've probably seen Caterpillar like with um, bulldozers or excavators. Um, they also make engines and those are supplied out to other heavy duty vehicles. And Caterpillar was saying that the shorter deadline shortens the ability to create a high quality product. Thus meaning if you're putting out a new engine that hasn't been properly used yet by customers or the company in the R&D stages, it can make a less quality product and the customers end up don't liking it and they don't buy your products anymore. So eventually they're going to say that it's going to make the industry tumble and fail. And next we're going to go into the stakeholders, which... Um, Cummins has many, many stakeholders. We're going to find out what those are. So as you can see here, I only have, you know, very diverse opinions. Half agreed with the EPA change, half disagreed with it. But who are those stakeholders? Well, the stakeholders are the customers, the agencies that regulate the motors, and then, of course, you have all of your, your board members, people that have bought stock in your company, and people that are running the company. And then, of course, you have the environment, too. You could say that's a stakeholder kind of going along with the triple bottom line. And all of them had different opinions, which made it really hard for Cummins to make a decision in this situation. They really didn't know what to do. And then actually, the end of the case study doesn't even tell you what they did. They said they were going to go into this meeting knowing that it's going to have two options, whether it's to comply and go along with the two-year advance or push it back or leave it completely. So we're going to kind of do like a strengths and weaknesses analysis of the two different choices that we can make here, or what Cummins can make. And choice one is to delay the EPA decision or leave it completely. And the strengths of that would be there's more time to develop this new engine with the new emission standards. Um, quality will most likely increase, and then there's less risk, less risk of losing money because you're having more time to develop this new engine. And most likely the customers are going to like it because it's higher quality when it you know, releases into the market. However, there are weaknesses. If you were to push it back or leave completely and not meet the standards of the EPA with this new agreement, there are fines up to $12,000 per
per engine that Cummins would have to absorb in all of its competitors as well. That's a lot of money to um, put aside you know, per engine and add that on to your bottom line. Uh, the lost opportunity to produce most efficient engines because that would mean since this isn't being pushed forward, people aren't going to try as hard to make a new engine and develop it. And then also you're breaking the Cummins values in the mission because you're not sticking to what you originally promised. Cummins originally promised to meet this deadline even though it got pushed back unexpectedly. That is still breaking a promise and that goes against their values. And then also there's lost money regarding all the factory and supplier conversions. They're already getting their factories converted with all their machines to produce this new engine underneath the new standards. And also they had to find new suppliers that could meet the standards of the standards. So that's money wasted and time wasted, which would put you back probably anywhere from six weeks to three to four months of all the tooling changes and supplier changes. So then really you would only be saving eight months on average with this new agreement. And then now we're going to go into choice two, which is to comply with the EPA and go along with the advance, advancing of two years of this new standard. And as I said, the timeline has been advanced by two years. Less emissions are being demanded, going down from four to 2.5 grams per horsepower hour. Um, you have good public and government image when you do this because the EPA is government related and sometimes consumers like seeing a company make green initiatives and this was back in 2001, 2002 where the green movements were kind of relatively new but they're starting to mature. Um, Cummins would be the only company to currently produce the engine because their new engine had already currently met the standards in R&D during this timeline. So whether they release now or two years from now, they were going to meet the minimum. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be as high quality two years from now, but they would be the only company to meet it, meaning they're the only company to get their motor out, which means all the other companies are falling behind. Therefore, they have a competitive advantage by doing so. Um, however, another interesting fact was that these new motors were going to cost about $3,500 onto the additional retail price. And then also the consumer would absorb another $3,500 or so of gasoline expenses because the new standards, you don't get as much gas mileage out of it. So that was a concern of doing this new motor is about $7,000 of additional expenses added on. However, when you compare that to the $12,000 fee of going on the old engine still, you're still profiting $5,000. So you're still coming out on top positively. Um, it is risky, you know, with R&D going with the new motor. That was kind of given earlier. We already talked about that. And then competitors claim the new engines are worse quality, such as the gas having less gas mileage. And also, since there's less R&D time, it might be less reliable. However, that's been unproven, and you can't go off of that to make your sole decision. And then now we're going to go into kind of concluding this whole thing where you're going to start with the mission. You know, they have the mission of being ethical by honoring promises and improving the environment. Why would you break your promise when you made a whole effort just two years ago to have standard missions throughout your corporation? I don't know why you'd want to do that. Uh, point number two, Cummins has a competitive advantage, actually two of them. The first is they are the second in market share right before Caterpillar by only 3%. That's pretty close. And all the other people are following Cummins because Cummins is the only one that has an engine that's ready for this. So if Cummins decides to go ahead and comply, well, all the other companies are going to have to comply. But it's going to take them probably a year and a half to two years to even get to the point of where Cummins is now, meaning their quality is going to be high in two years. But then within another two years, Cummins is going to have all their bugs fixed out. So Cummins will be like the first market penetrator with this engine. And then also the stakeholders, they're 50-50 on the decision. So basically whatever the CEO says in this situation, is it's going to fly because it's split right now. My personal recommendation 
I'm going to say to comply. And I'm not just going to say that because it's the easy answer and it's the green answer. It's the triple bottom line answer with what we've been learning. But it goes with the mission and values of the company that they are trying to honor. And that whole initiative with the mission was quite extensive. Everyone was saying, you know, we like these values. We, don't, we want to live and work by these values. So that's why they should go with this decision. They're going to live out their values, even if there's going to be a little short-term loss because of it. Um, Cummins won't honor unethical lobbying. That's what Caterpillar was doing. Caterpillar was lobbying in Washington, D.C., trying to get everyone to sign this document to push it back with the EPA. Well, again, that kind of shows that if Cummins were to go along with Caterpillar, that they're being unethical based on profit and only profit. And that's not what you're supposed to do when you're trying to be ethical. And then lastly, if you're to go and comply and release your engine to be the first market penetrator, you're going to have a competitive advantage. Even if your quality is going to be a little less for six months to one and a half years, you're still going to be the first one out there. Yeah, you're going to lose customers like um, Cummins is afraid of, and customers are actually telling them, hey, you know, some of us, we're not going to stay with you because of the gas mileage difference. That's, that's what you do. You cut your losses at first, and then you start to gain on the competitive advantage because then guess what's going to happen to the other companies that start doing their new engine? Those customers are then going to leave that company because they're going through the same problems that Cummins had two years ago. But since Cummins has had the time to fix those issues, then Cummins is going to regain not only the customers that they lost initially, but then the new customers that are going to be coming from Caterpillar and Detroit Diesel and the other diesel manufacturers. So in my opinion, you're beating the competition to the prize. You're being the early bird that's getting the worm. Yeah, you're risking a little bit. You're going to lose a little bit. But long term, you're going to be satisfied by your decision. Your customers are going to be satisfied. So that's my recommendation. I'm already at 17 minutes. Uh, I apologize for that. However, I want to hear your opinion on this. I want to hear if you would comply with the EPA or if you would rather uh, go against the EPA's will and get your short-term profits, but then, you know, be bitten in the butt three, four years from now. Um, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And make sure that you view the slides um, along with this as I talked. And thanks again. Have a good one.